Hi everyone, GW Fox here with the Model Gaming Show. We're here live uh, on Twitch, and it is March 15th. Okay, we're gonna get started. A lot of stuff to cover from last week and this week. Um, first, new releases this week. I'm gonna do my best here. Uh, you got Warhammer Vermintide 2 uh, releases on the 8th. Open Critic 81 right now. It looks really fun. I've watched some uh, four-player co-op. Looks really good too. Like runs well. Uh, visually appealing looks good um, Devil May Cry HD comes out March 13th getting very lukewarm reviews 64 on open critic that's not very good uh, Kirby Star Allies or whatever this is this game it's a 75 on open critic it looks okay not my cup of tea comes out on the 16th Friday and uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered also comes out tomorrow. It's currently sitting at an 80, 78 on Open Critic. Um, not bad. Those aren't bad. That, that, that's not a bad score. But you expected. I guess I just expected them to do more with it. Um, but they haven't. So th those are the new releases this week. I want to dig right in to uh, two main topics. One, the first one I want to dig into is the Nintendo Direct that happened last Thursday. It was too much to process uh, in a short amount of time, and so I just didn't feel comfortable enough covering it. So I'm going to dig into the highlights for me right now, or the questions that I have. The first being Luigi's Mansion from the GameCube coming to the 3DS. So my thought is, the 3DS has been around for a bunch of years now, got a huge install base, I think like 70 million, and they could have done this at any time. And I'm one, wondering what's taken them so long to do it, and two, know the reason that they didn't do it on the Switch, because they can double dip. Uh, and that's the frustrating part about where Nintendo's at right now, is that they have two handheld consoles. I don't care that you say the Switch is a home console, it's not. You can interview 100 people, most of them will say they play it on the go and that's why it's appealing to them. I'm one of the few people I know that play it major, uh, majority of the time docked to my TV. I just don't need to take it on the go. But for them to being a game from, I think, gosh, the GameCube, I, this game came out in like early 2000s, 15 years old, something like that, now to the 3DS. I, why? I mean, I know why. I just explained that. But it's just kind of a low blow when you could have... They like de it. Do you know what I mean from the GameCube? It's ridiculous. They could have just released it simultaneously. Uh, that would have been much better. Um, like I mentioned, Kirby Star... Or, I have Kirby Star Adventure. Now, I don't know if that's the same as Kirby Star Allies. I went back and I looked, but um, it, it just... It looks jolly and light. It just looks like a fun time. Um, nothing too deep or crazy. It, it, I'm interested, but whatever. It's it's not something I'm going to be clamoring for. Um, guess the next game that's on every system that's been remastered and released on every damn system now? Okami! Does move ever. I don't know how well the controls are going to translate, but it, of course that game's going to go on every system. The art style ensures that it looks good forever. Um, very excited, very excited. Uh, Project Octopath Traveler, July 13th. I'm pretty surprised by that. We've really heard no news since the demo was released, and for it to be releasing so soon, I'm really happy. I mean, that's just, what do we have? That's four months away. That's great. Um, Travis Strikes Again, finally the, the game we've all been wondering about. It looks like seven different games in one, or you go into seven different areas and you use 
the play style of those areas. So it's like one's a top down, one's a third person, and you're all fighting with his like electro bat. It looks it looks fun. It looks crazy. Uh, and that's what that game is supposed to be. Just fun, crazy collaboration. I hope it turns out well. It looks it looks really cool. Um, game that I'm had very limited interest in, but now that I've seen it and now that I see the mechanics, I'm much more interested is Mario Tennis Aces. It actually comes out on June 22nd, which is soon. It almost seems like they've melded the best of Super Mario Strikers and like Smash in a way. Some of the some of the mechanics, like this freezing time and the speeding up, I really like. And um, I, I just think it looks fun. I played a ton of Wii Tennis, and this looks like the ultimate Mario version where there's actually some... Um, not skill involved, but there's actually some technique involved, and if it plays anything like Strikers did for the GameCube, I really like that game. The reviews are like, it's got like a 78 or 80 or something like that, but I think it's a better game than that, and I think this looks like the refined version of it, just tennis. Uh, Mario sports games are fun. Um, they're, they might not be very, very deep, but that's kind of what surprised me about this game is that there's a lot of mechanics. There's slices, drop shots, all the all the good stuff that you've had, but the power shots and the breakable rackets and that kind of stuff add a little bit of layer of strategy to it, which is a nice it's a nice addition to something that I thought was just going to be simple. Um, next thing I think is cool, and I played a little bit of the first one. I don't know, I can't remember if I beat it or not with my friend on the Wii U, but it's. Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. And what they're doing is very unique. So they're releasing it on uh, day and date, or not day and date, they're releasing on the Switch on 7-13, July 13th. And then they're also releasing it on the 3DS, which I thought was cool. They're doing like a de-resed version of it at a later date. I don't think it was day and date. But what they're doing is they're using the 3D. And I had a 3DS, and it was fun, but I wasn't getting a lot of use out of it, and there were just very few games that I really liked, and so I got I, I got rid of it. I sold it. But that game in 3D would be really friggin' cool, and I'm kind of bummed that I don't get that. I, I'll probably pick up uh, Puzzle <laughs> Captain Toad's uh, Captain Toad on the Switch because I did enjoy what I played for the Wii U, and it'll give me a chance to get back into it. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, a smart move by Nintendo where they're releasing it for both within each other. And they're both unique versions. Now you got Splatoon 2 has uh, Octo Summer. Just says coming in 2018. I'm assuming it's coming in the summer. That would be kind of silly if to call someone Octo... Call a DLC uh, pack. It's 20 bucks uh, for 27, 2018 summer. Um, seems ideal, right? I don't have Splatoon 2, I'm not a huge multiplayer guy, and for a six hour campaign that looks fun, it's just not worth the $60 that Nintendo games are. Um, maybe if they release both in one on the Switch, I'd get it, kind of like they just did with Bayonetta 2 and 1, but for me, the the trailer was great for Splatoon 2 Octo Summer. It was really, the vibe of Splatoon 2 is great. I like everything about it except the multiplayer shooter, which I don't care. So Splatoon 2 is great. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it actually. That might get me to buy the game and the, the expansion. Then coming to the Switch as well as other platforms is Crash Bandicoot Remastered, which is really cool. I'm glad it's getting a chance to live on other systems. Um, I, I, Especially with something like that, you want it to hit the broadest appeal, and it looks like it was a timed exclusive with Sony, and that's coming to Nintendo Switch uh, July 10th, and then they set a later date. Um, I don't know if they said PC, but I know it's coming to Xbox as well. So then we got the final thing, and there's not much to talk about on this, but it's interesting. Great CG trailer with the uh, Splatoon 2 kids running around shooting each other, and then all of a sudden... You just see the shadow and uh, glimmer in the eye of the Smash logo, and you see the most menacing Mario and Zelda like or Link ever. It was kind of strange, honestly. It was Mario tinged in fire. It was really Mario's never looked like a demon, but he did in this. And Smash 2018. That's all they're calling it, Super Smash 2018, right? But what is it? It would be simple to now the original director who said it's slowly killing me. 
That guy who has not wanted to work on this for a long time, he's a part of it. So my guess is that it's a remaster, despite music and other clues saying otherwise. I am assuming it's a remaster with an additional mode or features, added characters. Uh, you're probably going to get a couple of, you know, guys that you missed from last time, like Ice Climbers and Shovel Knight, and you'll probably get some of those new characters. I hope they, I hope they do something cool with the characters. I hope, I hope they add a couple of ones that you're not expecting, like Snake when he was on GameCube. That was really awesome. I, I love the idea of Geralt of Rivia, but he's in Soul Calibur now, so there's no way he's coming in Smash. Um, so yeah, the Nintendo Direct was great. It was like 34 minutes, and it moved along. And quite quite quickly and it dropped a lot of good information and good stuff things that I'm looking forward to this year I mean in June and July. I got Mario Tennis Aces. I've got Toad's Treasure Shacker I've got Crash and I've got uh, Octopath Traveler. I mean, that's a that's a damn good time um, So a smaller news article That'll go into the big story the big headline is Fortnite is releasing for iOS and mobile and soon at a later date for Android. It's the game that you're playing now on your phone and that's friggin nuts. And that's how Epic basically dropped it is that going forward all updates and all this crap are going to be on global launch for every system. It looks good on a phone. It really does. I, I hope... I, I imagine the internet is going to be impactful. You're going to have to be on 5G. You're going to have to be near a router to play on like data. Is unless 5G starts hitting later this year, it's not going to really be feasible. But I mean, you can connect on newer phones now. You can connect a controller to your phone, so you could bring a controller with your phone and just play Fortnite at somebody's house or somewhere with a Wi-Fi connection. That's pretty friggin' cool. Epic is raking it in right now. I'm glad they are. They're a good company. Uh, they're going to turn into Valve and they're never going to make another game because they won't need to. But that's okay. For right now, it's awesome. I'm glad the success and it transitions into uh, a cool story that happened last night um, on the 14th. And I watched part of it. I watched for about 15 minutes. I was doing some work late at night and had a chance to catch it. But Ninja, uh, up and coming and now one of the most popular streamers on Twitch, used to be a pro, pro gamer, and he is uh, a, mainly plays Fortnite. Uh, as far as I know, he only plays Fortnite, streams it rather. And uh, there's been rumors and stuff, and he's been hinting that he's gonna get Drake on, and then, damn, it actually happened. Uh, Ninja and Drake went on Twitch, and they played duos for a couple hours, or an hour and a half, or whatever, and it drew more than 600,000, people for concurrent people and they also got a couple other random people that are funny like kim.com juju smith schuster and i think his name's uh it's little yachty travis scott or scott travis i'm, I'm mixing it up because it's two first names and i'm i think it's travis scott um but they played uh you know four player which was awesome too and that's what's great about a game like Fortnite. It's free to play, low barrier to entry. You can get up and join up with random people. But I, I kind of want to talk about the moment, you know, that this brings. It brings national attention to video games. And that's always great. Drake, for all intents and, purpo intents and purposes, this is way beneath him. But from what everyone's been writing about is over his recording sessions, this is helping him, like, decompress and unwind and that's awesome it, to have a celebrity of his stature and if you don't believe he is massive the dude just made 100 million last year so think about that as a hip-hop artist his branding is global he's a great entertainer um and for uh in all avenues he seems like a perfectly likable friendly guy um obviously i don't know him personally but he drew a crowd, and from what I was seeing in the comments, it wasn't the usual vitriol. It was shock. And Ninja, Ninja is a cool streamer. He's not. He he's his own personality, but there's no controversy there. He's fun to watch, and he gets a lot of Fortnite viewers. I can tell you that much. But having them together, and it was it was a it was a great cultural moment. Honestly, I was kind of shocked, and while watching it. It was fun. It was cool to be a part of that and to be in that. And 
for, I, I, I'm not sure how long they played, um, four hours, I, I, I imagine, something like that, but to have five to 600,000 people for four hours uh, invested is amazing. That, that's, that is crazy. And I realize Drake is one of the biggest stars we have that the U.S. has right now, right? Even though he's Canadian, so I guess he's not the U.S. He's one of the biggest stars in the world right now, I'll say that before I misspeak more. But it was a great moment, and I hope there's more of that. I hope there's more celebrity people coming out and championing, championing, championing video games. Uh, that's a tough word. Championing, championing video games. Jeez. Because... It's a huge part of our society. As we get uh, older and older, games, or as games get a little bit older, they become more and more ingrained in our society. They're the largest entertainment industry in in the U.S. and, um, or I think in the world. And it's it's incredible what this did for public awareness. That oh crap, Drake's playing video games online. What's this Fortnite game? Yeah, it does great for Fortnite, but it also gets people invested in Twitch and streaming. Which is really important too, because I think that's this is going to be a big way for people to uh, connect with each other and make new relationships and do all that good stuff online. So it was incredible seeing it. I'm I'm happy it happened. It's really cool to get. I, I mean, th think about this: you have a pro gamer, a pro NFL, uh, like an all-star NFL player. Uh, a hip hop artist in Drake, I call him, I, I say he's more hip hop than rap and Lil Yachty rap hip hop. Do you know what I mean? But like, those are all like crazy unique personalities. And even though two of them are, are in the, you know, rap game, I guess you want to call it hip hop field. Um, it's incredible that they all got together and big names tweeting it out, getting that presence known. I mean, I would love to know the numbers on how many individual people saw that. Unique, unique people saw it because they have concurrent 600,000. I, I mean, there's pop people popping in and out, I'm sure, to take a look. So I'd love to see the actual numbers of that of individual people that uh, that viewed it. So that's it for that's it for tonight's uh, going a little bit early. Got other obligations tonight, but thank you for watching this again. I'm GW Fox. You can find me on. Instagram and Twitter at that name, uh, G-W-F-A-W-K-E-S. And you can find me here most weekday nights, uh, but definitely Monday and Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, twitch.tv forward slash Model Gaming Show. Just type that in, Model Gaming Show on YouTube to catch all my archives. And uh, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Haven't done this in a while because I totally forgot, but it's... Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed your stay. It's good to have you with us, even if it's just for the day. Cheers, everyone.